What makes a watch worth it? I have a lot of conversations with people on the internet and in actual real life, which still exists, people talking about whether a watch is worth it, a, a good value or the right price. I get it, nobody really wants to feel like a sucker. Everyone wants to feel like they're getting their money's worth. And those conversations, they're fun, but the real answer, the answer that kind of shuts it all down is that a watch is worth it if you like it enough. Sorry, that's it. And I bring that up because these watches, these new watches from Christopher Ward will be very worth it for some of you and very not worth it for others. And I know I'm not supposed to be reasonable on YouTube. I'm supposed to say things like best watch ever buy now or major fail, stay away. But anyone who talks like that is trying to sell you something and what they're selling is probably themselves. Don't listen to them. And because I know these are good quality watches from a good brand, it really comes down to whether you like how they look and wear, and I, well, we'll get into it. These are two 12 watches, not 24. These are individually just 12. They're called 12. 40 millimeters and 36 millimeters in steel. The 12 is an integrated bracelet sports watch. Yeah, it's another one. And maybe we're finally at the point where there are just so many of these, so many brands have them, that it's like we're in a post-trend phase. This style is just an expected style now. It's like, you don't hear anyone complaining about, oh boy, another watch with 20 millimeter lugs. Aren't we done with those by now? It's just ubiquitous, get used to it. There are so many configurations of the 12. There are two sizes, each have different dial options. They're steel and titanium on a rubber strap or on a bracelet. The most expensive arrangement is the 40 millimeter titanium on a bracelet. That's 1895. And the least expensive are any of the steel references on a rubber strap. That's 995. These right here on bracelets, these are each 1225. They both also have 100 meters of water resistance and they share a 10 millimeter thickness. 40 millimeters, 36 millimeters. 44.5 millimeters long, 41 millimeters long. On full bracelets, 160 grams and 81 grams. Now that weight, 160 grams, that surprised me about the 40 millimeter watch. Not because it's heavy, but because it's not. This watch feels very light to me and very comfortable on my wrist. Now here's a little math trick. Maybe it'll help you remember the circumference of my wrist. Think of any number between zero and 27 million. Now divide that number by two. Good. Multiply by zero, add 10, subtract three. Did you get seven? Seven inches, that's the size of my wrist. And I've found that this 40 millimeter watch wears a bit smaller than I was expecting. And people I've shown this to have thought the same thing. There are a couple factors that I think make this wear just a little smaller. First is the thickness, 10 millimeters, that's really nice. It just sits so well because the weight of the watch is very close to the wrist, its center of mass is low. Okay, that doesn't affect how you see the watch visually, especially from the top. But on the wrist, the lightness and comfort just kind of trick your brain or what's left of it. And visually, this looks smaller than most watches with an integrated bracelet. That's because the width of the case where it meets the bracelet is just a little narrower than something like a Royal Oak or a Tissot PRX. And that's good, at least for me. So that big surface area that's common with watches like this, the 12 just doesn't have that. Not only does this wear a little smaller than those other watches, but I also find it a bit more elegant, and we'll talk more about the design style in a minute. And the bracelet, it also drops down a bit more than other similar watches. My dude Deluxe has a photo that shows what I'm talking about. The Christopher Ward 12 versus the Tissot PRX. You can see that because of the case and the first links of the bracelet, this can hug a smaller wrist more betterer. But if you got the same size wrist as a Oaxacan water ferret, there's always the 36 millimeter version. Take the wrist of my special lady friend, for example. My wife's wrist is about 5.75 inches around or 15 centimeters. Now to remember the size of her wrist, pick a number, Never mind. I think the 36 millimeter watch looks great on her. I think most things look great on her and off of her. Anyway, I'm confident that the 36 millimeter 12 will work for wrists up to 6.5 inches. Larger than that, and I'd say go for the 40. If your sweet spot for a watch is 38 millimeters or larger, go for the larger watch here. Both bracelet sizes are brushed vertically with polished chamfers on the outer edges of the links and at the bottom of the links. 
The bracelet opens with a thin deployant clasp that I find pretty comfortable. I did not get a chance to try the rubber straps for either of these watches, very curious about those. And I didn't get a chance to try the 40mm titanium. I like the titanium dial options. There are two gradient dials, they look good in photos. And the titanium watch is 24 grams lighter, which honestly isn't really needed and I wonder if the titanium references feel too light on the wrist. Inside the steel watches is the Solita 200-1 movement. The 40mm watch has a date, the 36 does not, and the 36 does not have a ghost position when using the crown. The movement could be better, maybe should be better. The titanium references use the Solita 300-1. The steel watches have a power reserve of 38 hours, the titanium have a power reserve of 56 hours, and the titanium movements are certified chronometers. I think the steel watches could use the 300-1 movement without the chronometer certification, just to have that extra power reserve. On the flip side, under the other sapphire crystal is a really nice looking dial. Christopher Ward calls this texture a pyramid pattern. It kind of looks like woven fabric from a distance. And I'm not going to say that it plays with a light because that phrase is gross and weird, but I do like how it frolics with the photons. That's worse, that's so much worse. What I'm trying to say is it's nice. The markers and hands pair really well with the rest of the design. The whole thing is bold without being brutal, elegant and strong, which is not an easy thing to pull off in a watch design or in life as a person. Elegant, strong, and doggone it, people like me. The loom is also strong. I'm not sure how loom could be elegant, but maybe this is. Much better loom than on most other watches in this style, and I'm including those from Audemars Piguet, Patek, Tissot, and IWC. And it's also interesting that there's no name on the dial, just the Christopher Award logo, which I think is a pretty clever logo. And the nearly anonymous dial is one of the first things my wife commented on about the 12. And then she wore it for a full day, and then another day, and then another. Mrs. Terrific and I have been shopping for a watch for her for nearly a decade, no joke. She is extremely picky about watches, not so much about spouses. It's gotta have good water resistance. It must have both a bracelet and strap option. It must be mechanical. It must have a display back. That was non-negotiable for her. She wants to look at a nice back and it's got to be stylistically somewhere between dressy and sporty. Versatile is the word. So with her approval, I bought the Glacier Blue 36 mm 12 for my wife for her birthday. I know this could be a very dangerous road to share with my lady, but I'm excited for her and I feel really good about the watch. So going back to the original question, is the 12 worth it? Yeah, I guess it is for me and my wife. It may not be for you, shoot. It may not be for my wife in a year from now when she decides that anything under $20,000 is for noobs and pores, God forbid. But for now, this is a good watch for her because she likes it, which is rare. And more importantly, no, most importantly, there's another watch in my house that I get to play with and take photos of. Thank you.